Okay, so the goal is to set some hardware breakpoints and interpret the registers. So you could pick wherever you wanted. I'm going to pick somewhere in the IDT. So you could choose various locations and some of them would lead to heartache. For instance, you know, I originally chose the entry point of the sysenter instruction and that didn't work out so well. But instead this time I'm going to just pick a location in the IDT. So break on access, execute one and that particular thing. Performance interrupt sounds relatively safe. And I don't know, I'm just gonna go with the RSP as my location for the right breakpoint. So break on right, and let's say, let's make it eight, and this particular address. Now, I said that you're not going to see it immediately get updated, so you can see my debug registers are still zero despite having set those. You can do BL to confirm that you know those are going to be set. And so I said you have to actually go and then immediately break if you want to actually you know go interpret it. I can see that actually this thing fired before I could hit the, the pause GUI here in WinDebug. So it did actually break on a write. So let's go ahead and interpret the registers and see what we see. So we need to back up and you know look at the control register seven starting from the beginning. Do we see global enable? Do we see local enable? Let's find out. So control register seven, we could do DX at debug register seven. I said control register seven, but it's debug register seven. So here you can see that bit zero is set and bit two is set. So that would correspond to local enable zero and local enable one. And that makes sense because we have two breakpoints that are set into debug register zero and debug register one. First one being this address of this particular performance interrupt. So that's our execute breakpoint and that's our write breakpoint. We can see that the globals are not set in this output. So the global enables are not set. Looks like we got a bit here. So let's check what that bit is. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think that's 10, assuming I counted correctly. Looks like it is because that's always set in debug register 7. All right, so bit 10 is set. And then there's some other bits up here that are set. So let's go see which bits those are. So this was 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 19 and 20. All right, 1920 is a boundary. So we want to say 2021. So this would be 20 and 21, whereas 18 and 19 are zero. So what we see then is 20 and 21 are zero ones. We need to go interpret these, right? So 2021 are zero one, and that's what we would expect. We have a break on data right, zero one, in 21 and 20. Then we have 00, zero in read write 0 and length 0. So, right, these earlier bits are all 0 here. So the interpretation of that is that it's a break on instruction execution for breakpoint 0, which is exactly what we expect. And then the length here is one byte for the instruction execution. And for this one, bits 22 and 23, we would expect would be one zero because we set a eight, eight byte break on write. So if this was, sorry, if this was 21, let's see, that was 2021 or zero one. And so 22, 23 are one zero and one zero is the eight byte version. So that's exactly what we would expect in the debug control register enablement of debug register zero, debug register one, some particular hard coded bit there. And then this said it was a break on execute. This said a one byte. This said a break on write. And this said eight bytes. Okay, so now I said that actually this breakpoint one hit, this break on write to my stack address hit before I could actually uh, hit the break. So let's see what we have in debug register six, which is our status register. So dx at dr6 in binary. 
So the zeroth bit is unset and the oneth bit is set. So what does that mean? So we need to move down to the debug status register. The zeroth bit is not set and the oneth bit is set. So this means that it is breakpoint one or debug register one, which is the thing that actually fired. So you would have to, a debugger would go back and it would look at the control registers and it would say like, okay, for debug register seven was, you know, entry one was zero, sorry, zero was enabled and one was enabled. It could be the case that, you know, the, the breakpoint bit was set, but this could actually be set to not enabled, but it does see this corresponds to this, which was enabled because this was the globals and the locals. So what other bits are set here? Well, we can see zero, one, two, three, and then a whole bunch of ones, how many ones? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight bits of ones. Let's check here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight bits of ones, exactly as we'd expect. And then we would have a hard coded zero. And then we might have something like the BD if the general detect was set. Now we didn't actually see general detect set up in the control register, so we don't expect to see it here. But this was eight bits of ones and then a zero and that is zero. So that means the break on general detect is not what just fired. Next one is BS, that was break on single step. That one is also zero. And then BT and RTM we didn't cover, so we don't care. All right, so that's the way that you would actually interpret, you know, the values in the debug registers. You can interpret DR6 as being the status when a breakpoint actually hits. You may not have actually had your breakpoint fire. It all depends on where you set the breakpoint. But DR7 is the main thing controlling, you know, how it's set. And, you know, we ultimately see that the things correspond to exactly what we set in WinDebug.